Hey, it's Steve Lindsley. Welcome to my shop. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this segmented potpourri box. We got a little uh, decorative top here on the top. I don't know if you can see it, but we got a little raccoon there, and he's supposed to be in a tree. So that uh, come out kind of nice, and I'll, I'll uh, you can see it better in the video. Uh, this is uh, made out of some scrap mahogany and sapile that was laying around. I just got a plywood bottom and a little piece of uh, quarter inch mahogany on the, on the top here. So it was a lot of fun. Combined a little uh, scroll saw work with some uh, segment and turning. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you how I made this, this piece and I hope you enjoy the video. All right, I still have my plan from when I made these uh, potpourri boxes in December of 2011. Um, it's basically, I know you can't see it, but there's basically seven rings that make the box. The bottom of the box is five rings and the, the lid is two rings. Uh, we put a uh, plywood bottom in the, in the bottom and then the, uh, the scroll saw on pieces. So what I've done is I've, I've milled up some more stock for the, um, to finish this thing up. The, uh, it's one and three eighths inches wide. Um, the segment is one and five eighths inches. What I need to do next is get the get the saw set up. We need about 25 more pieces. Uh, I should have enough there to get at least that many out of them. I'll probably cut a couple extra, so. Okay, well, it's just a uh, rinse and repeat on these things. I just keep going until I get the uh, the number that I want. They uh, come out exactly the, exactly the same size, so that's that's a good thing. Uh, so let's just kind of go ahead and do a, a dry fit. So all I have to do is uh, put the clamp over it, and we'll put our dowels in there temporarily until we get started with the started tightening up the clamp a little bit. Right. It's important to kind of stand those in the middle of the middle of the segment. I'm making sure all the segments are even all the way around. We'll get a little bit more pressure on it. Uh, they need to be all the outside edges need to line up. Uh, you can make some adjustments before you tighten it up too much. They all need to be flat. Okay, so we should have that what you want, we'll go ahead and tighten up the band clamp. You don't really need to kill it, but you need to get it tight so all the all the joints come together tight. I kind of check it on the bottom to make sure everything's making sure everything is even. If I can get this where you can see it. Um, so we got a nice we got nice tight fit between the uh, between the segments. Um, so we're going to go ahead and glue this one up. Some scrap quarter inch plywood. This happens to be oak, but anyone works. Uh, and cut some uh, pieces that are a little bit longer than the a little bit longer than the half ring and a little bit taller. I've drawn a line approximately in the center of it. And what we're going to do is we're going to glue this this piece to this piece of plywood. So, all I do is I, I take the the half ring. We're just going to use some uh, tight bond original glue. Uh, nothing special. We just need a a little bit on the back here. We don't need a lot, um, so I just stand that up on a flat surface and put that piece of plywood up. We can line up the line with this center joint. That dries. We uh, I'll run the this edge of the plywood along the along the fence on the uh, on the table saw, and that'll trim these bottoms uh, flush so that we get a nice fit when we fit the two rings together. <laughs> It's a nice tight fit, so we can put a band clamp on that then, and uh, I mean, put a put some glue on it, put a clamp on it, and then that ring will be ready to go. All 
I have the scroll saw. We're going to go ahead and scroll saw the top of our potpourri box. What I have is a quarter inch piece of mahogany. What we have here is a uh, it's a little raccoon, if you can see him. Here's his little eyes and his ears. And uh, this is a tree, so he's, he's kind of a, a little raccoon hanging in a tree there. So I thought that'd be kind of nice. I've drilled 1 16th inch holes wherever you see these little marks here. And what we got to do is scroll saw out all those pieces that are... Uh, um, with the holes drilled in them, so uh, it's going to be a little while to do that. I'll show a little bit of that. You can see that I didn't, uh, I didn't stay exactly, uh, let me get it on there, I didn't stay exactly on the lines, but uh, for this particular project, that's fine. I could have went a little further there and maybe a little bit down there, but the goal is just to remove all the parts that are not supposed to be there, and, and uh, we'll come up with a nice lid for our uh, potpourri box. So I'm going to go ahead and Keep scroll sawing away, and uh, when I get closer to the end, I'll come back and show you the finished product. Well, I had intended show and cut out this last piece here. I thought I filmed it, but apparently the uh, camera on the phone didn't cooperate with me. So anyway, um, it's taken me a little while to get this thing scroll sawn. I've, I've broken quite a few blades. That probably wasn't exactly the right blade for what I was doing because it was a very fine blade. Um, but the good news is it leaves a fairly smooth surface, so there's not a lot of sand that needs to be done on any of those. So uh, you can kind of see the little uh, raccoon here. Here's his little eyes and his uh, nose and his ears and whatnot. So I think it'll uh, it'll be a nice uh, lid for our uh, potpourri. All right. Well, here's all the parts we need for our potpourri box. Uh, I got the scroll saw top piece there, uh, and I just cut a. Uh, plywood bottom. It's just some oak quarter inch plywood that I had. It can be anything actually. Um, so those two are cut about the same size. <clears throat> here's, the, here's the top and the bottom ring and this is the rings that go in between. There's five of them. What I've done is I've, I've attached a, a piece of plywood to the inside. I uh, drilled a hole through it that matches the hole that I had on the, uh, on the plywood on the back. So we're going to use that to mount the, the uh, rings to the lathe for turning. Uh, I said this is a top ring. My original, originally I, I just kind of got carried away and I glued, a, I glued a, a piece to the inside here which is not what I want. Uh, what I did then was when I realized that I didn't, shouldn't have done that, I glued another piece of plywood to the back. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn this all away here. Um, uh, so that's the, the bottom piece. Uh, since this is a scrap wood project, I left the uh, this ring uh, pretty much rough. The uh, I don't know about you, but my scrap wood is never the same thickness. So as you can see, or hopefully you can see, that these things are all different after different heights. Um, uh, normally, I would run those through the through the drum sander, and we'd clean them all up just like we did this one. But um, before I had a drum sander, I actually put each one on the lathe and cleaned it up. So I left this one. I've left this one uh, kind of rough so that we can put it on there. And I'll show you how I um, turn these things to get this per part flat. So if you don't have a drum sander, you can still do it this way. Uh, what I want, like I said, it, it's, uh, you can see this piece is large and there's some others that are, are different sizes. So like I said, this was a scrap wood project, so we kind of use whatever scrap we had. Now one of the things I'm going to do first is <clears throat> take a a bowl gouge in and uh, clean off the outside. At that point was to make that round which we which we did so we're gonna turn the tool rest around here uh, like I said before I had a drum sander this is pretty much the way that I uh, I cleaned up every ring 
um, which is nothing wrong with it. Just drum sander makes it a little quicker is all. So I'm just going to clean the front of this up. Finish this up with a with a round nose scraper using kind of a shear cut. Clean that last part up. Before we get too far, we want to see how flat we are. I just use a straight edge off my combination square, and by looking at it, I can see that we got a little bit more on the taken off on the inside than the outside, but all the rings are flat, flat to each other, so that's good. All right, I had a piece of 80 grit sandpaper glued to a just a flat board. Now we're going to use it to clean up this face and get everything uh, nice and even. One thing I like to do is uh, take a pencil and make a uh, make a few marks on it so that when I know I got all the pencil line signs, uh, pencil marks sanded off, uh, we're in pretty good shape. So turn the, turn the lathe down. Normally I have my dust collector on when I'm doing this, but we're just going to go ahead and. I got my caliper set at four inches, and we're going to go ahead and, and uh, make a mark there, and then we're going to clean that out till we get it to four inches. So let's uh, unlock the spindle. Give it a shot. Okay. Now you've seen me do this before, so when I touch this side to the to the piece and make a mark, when it and when it lines up. On this side, then we know that we're centered. So we're in pretty good shape here, though. And then I just press it to make the mark. All right. For uh, so you can see it a little bit better. There's our four-inch circle. Raise the tool rest a little bit, and then clean that out. I've reset the calipers and I made another mark around here that it's the uh, about the diameter of this um, <clears throat> our top piece and it's not exactly round so I made it as close as I could uh, so when I check it then it looks like it's going to fit in there so what we'll do is we'll make a uh, make a little rabbit there to put that in I've also taken the calipers and I've set them for the thickness of the piece and we're going to use this little tip that sticks out on the end to get our get our depth um, which is what we want. We want this piece to be flush with the inside here so when we glue the next piece on it actually holds it in there. So that's what we're that's what we're going for. If our little piece fits in that little groove we made, yeah, fits in there pretty good. So, this is not exactly round when I cut it on the scroll saw, I didn't make it exactly round because a lot of the edge is going to be covered up anyway. So, all right, so now all we need to do is make it the depth that we need. So, we're going to start with that and 
see if we can get it to come out here. Should be about it. Let's test it with a piece. Oh yeah. Sometimes you just get lucky. <laughs> that's uh, that's going to be a nice fit there. So the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this off, uh, and I'm going to glue it in there. But I'm only glued since the grain runs uh, this way on this piece, it runs up and down like this. I'm just going to glue it on the top and the bottom and give it a little bit room to expand should it decide to. It's got some wiggle room in there so I'll just put a little bit of glue here, a little bit of glue there and we'll let that dry then we'll glue the next piece on top of that and that's what'll hold it into the hold it into the to the lid. Alright well to kind of speed things along a little bit I went ahead and glued some of the bottom rings together and, and um, I just put them on the put them on the just one side on the lathe and use the use the uh, tailstock to center it up and glued them and that's been setting for like an hour and something now, so it's uh, it's uh, in good shape. So what we're going to do is we're going to put it on the lathe and cut this piece of uh, plywood off, and cut this ring, cut this ring to the uh, half inch thickness that we need it. All right, I brought the tailstock up to hold it when we take this uh, take this piece off. What I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to use a skew on its side. The the this plywood is tough on the bowl gouge and other things, so. Uh, skew's easy enough. That's yeah, a little on the wonky side. I need to Once I get a little bit of that off there, I can go ahead and use a bowl gouge to round it off. Pieces, pieces scrap, so we can throw that away. Now we'll go ahead and clean this face. All right, I'm just going to use a round note scraper to, to clean this up on the this side here. I made a mark on the outside of the on the outside diameter. I made a mark on here, and so it, our ring is a half inch. So we'll go ahead and clean this up. Once all the pencil mark is gone, we're nice and flat, and here we go. Alright, so that one's ready to continue on with our prime. Alright, I've put our top piece back on the, on the lathe, everything is uh, ready to go. Um, I've taken the next second ring for the, for the lid, and I've cut a rabbit around, or removed this material from the inside here. We didn't want to leave it full width, otherwise it would have been glued way out here someplace onto the, onto the scroll saw piece. I think I will just go ahead and put some glue on here but we'll be careful with uh, the amount that we put on. We want to get enough but like I said we don't want to go crazy either so. 
And again, I'm just using a regular tight bond wood glue. All right, now we'll just put this up here. Find my mark again. Somewhere. There it is. All right. We'll push that on there. We're going to bring the tailstock up. Center everything up. Give it a couple of twists. And we're just going to tighten up the tailstock to hold that on there. All right. Just to be uh, just to be sure everything's going to work the way it's supposed to, I'm going to put a couple of these little quick clamps on here, and that'll that'll help hold things as well. So. There. We'll give that about 15 or 20 minutes to set up and then we'll take it off the lathe and let it dry for an hour or so before we do anything else with it. Well, with that plywood gone, we can see our, our lid in there. Um, we can go ahead and turn the rest of this part off and get it the same diameter as the uh, what we turned earlier. So let's go ahead and do that. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to go ahead and hit that with a sandy block and we'll be good to go. We need to cut a rabbit on the inside of our lid here so that uh, when we make a tenon for the bottom that the two fit together and uh, go together with a nice fit but not too, um, not too tight. We got about three-eighths of an inch to play with on either side here so I'm going to make the rabbit about three-sixteenths of an inch uh, wide and, and we're going to go about Three eighths of an inch deep. So, I marked a mark that spot on there. We're going to go ahead and. should about do it. We're three-eighths. I think we're going to go ahead and call that good. All right, I've glued the, all the pieces together for the bottom, um, cleaned them up on the inside, sanded it a little bit. What we need to do now is cut a um, corresponding piece on the outside of this that'll match the inside that we cut on our, um, hopefully you can see that there, cut on our lid. <laughs> a little bit of speed. I'm just going to cut down on this outside edge at first, uh, just a shallow piece, that way I can trim it off if I make a mistake. So. That should be a little bit large. Yeah, that's not gonna not gonna fit yet. There, that's what I'm looking for. Um, 
nice tight fit like that. So what we'll do is we'll make that a little bit larger. It doesn't need to be the full 3 8 but it needs to be eh, close to it. Anyway. a little piece of ring there so I turned the whole thing we got it nice and tight and I'll sand it a little bit um, sand it a little bit then we can uh, go ahead and turn the outside the bottom of the uh, potpourri box is mounted on our faceplate uh, and here's the lid um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this on here bring up the tailstock and we're gonna turn both pieces as one one piece so that we can uh, Get everything nice. We're set for about, I uh, probably can't see it, but I got them set for a little over five inches, five and an eighth, really. Um, I want the finished dimension of the box to be about five inches. I'm gonna turn this down. We'll, so we're gonna take a parting tool, make some parting cuts, and turn these two pieces down until we get to the caliper. So let's go ahead and make sure we're not hitting nothing. Turn the lathe on. Give it a little bit of speed. everything turned to diameter so being that this is all side grain we're able to we should be able to use a, a roughing gouge without any problem to clean this up. Well, that cleaned up a lot of our our tear out. So what I'm going to do next is um, start sanding it. I'm going to start with some 120, uh, get everything smoothed out, finish it up with some 180, and probably some 220, and then we're going to call it good. All right, I got the project sanded up through uh, 220. What I did was I took a little mineral spirits and wiped on it. I always like to do that after sanding to make sure I get any removed any scratches and get some of the sawdust off and. Plus, it gives you an idea of what it's going to look like when it's uh, when we put some finish on it. And I'm, I'm thinking that it looks pretty nice. So, what we need to do next is uh, we're going to part off these pieces of plywood, and we can get rid of the. We can take the lid off now because that's. Uh, Since 
So I'm not sure how much of that I have left on there. I think I'm just going to go ahead and saw it off. Go ahead and saw it off. The last thing I want is this thing to be flying around the shop. Well, as you saw there a minute ago, I, I used the saw and the parting tool to remove the plywood from the bottom of our potpourri box. Now, that's certainly one way of doing it, and it, and it works fine. Uh, another way is this um, medium-sized set of jaws I have here. They have these rubber bumpers that, that fit on there, and then you just put the piece in there, tighten it up, and then bring the tail, we'll bring the tail stock up, tail stock up for a little uh, added support and some security, so we'll put that on there. Uh, and once we do that, we can go ahead and carefully take a parting tool and, and uh, part that bottom piece off. Uh, you can certainly make a jam chuck with, with a piece of wood and then, you know, another piece of wood and fit the, fit the lid to it and do basically the same things, but I have these jaws so we might as well go ahead and use them. That's all there is to that. All right, well, here's the, the lid mounted in the, the set of jaws. Uh, I've gone ahead and cleaned up this. I, I did record it, but something happened to the camera, and it didn't come out, so um, I'm not sure why it does that every now and then. Um, but the process is the same on the bottom, so I'll, I'll record doing the bottom. But basically, I just took a scraper and cleaned this off. Um, got it down to what I, I wanted distance-wise from here to the bottom there. And then I took a little parting tool and I made a little shadow line down inside here. You can't see it real well, but um, it, when you put the finish on it, it, make, it gives it a little bit of shadow line there. It looks kind of nice. So the only thing I have to do left on this is, is to sand this, uh, sand this part. Um, I used this sanding uh, board on it, but that's like 80 or 100 grit, so I need to clean it up with some 180 and 220. I will round this inside over edge over a little bit uh, just to break that inside, and I'll just touch this outside. I want to keep the outside fairly square, but this inside will look a little bit better if it has a little curve on it. All right, well, hopefully the camera stays on this time, and we can show cleaning up the bottom of this uh, bottom of our box. What I did was I changed out the... Uh, the rubber grippers on the on the large jaws. The the, the box has the rabbet for the lid, and those shorter um, bumpers didn't really give that much of a hold. So uh, rather than uh, chance it, I went ahead and changed them to the larger ones um, so that it's got a, a nice good grip on it there. So we're just going to take our scraper and we're going to clean up the bottom of this uh, bottom of this um, box. Give it a little bit of speed here. I'm just going to go ahead and sand that up. Well, here's our little box all finished up. Um, I got some mineral spirits. I wiped it down, so that's still drying. So uh, I think it came out pretty nice. Uh, overall, we got uh, seven rings with 12 segments each. So we got 84 pieces in the, in the segments and a top and a bottom. So overall, there's 86 pieces in this little box. I'll be able to get a, a few coats of lacquer on today and finish this box up. So uh, once I get it all finished, I'll come back and post some photos and this will, this piece will be good to go. Well that's how I made this little segmented turning scroll saw and potpourri box. So I hope you enjoyed watching the video as much as I've enjoyed uh, making this project. So uh, comments are always welcome of course and uh, thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe.